Sometimes when you're training birds, it's easier and safer to wear a glove to protect your hand. I found this to be very useful when I was working with small birds at the exotic bird rescue where I volunteered every night for years. I learned that force training was not a good technique for me at any rate and probably not for most people. It ends up with a bird biting you which can damage your relationship. Working more slowly and carefully with a bird who is unsocialized seems to be more effective. And I didn't always know this. I uh, remember one instance where I really was using force training to try to get a cockatiel out of the cage and it wasn't working and it, it nearly gave me a heart attack and it nearly gave the bird a heart attack. And so I learned, let's use other technique. Slow and gentle is the way to go. So this third parrot training tip involves my working with a cherry head conure named Bogey. Now Bogey was an interesting little bird. When I first met him he had a sign on his cage saying this bird is a biter and he actually gave me one of the few bites I received at the exotic bird rescue. I didn't get many although I was handling many many birds socializing them for the first time in years. African greys, cockatoos, macaws, amazons and I had few enough bites that I do remember the bite from Bogey. I was just giving him a pistachio through the cage bars and I ended up with a, a finger that was bleeding. So that was really why I wanted to work with him more intensely. I selected him as one of the first birds I would train. And to do that, having been bitten, I decided to use a glove. And specifically, I just used one of my padded winter gloves. But people on line who were experts at bird training, I was new to it, said that a glove would scare the bird and that it probably wouldn't work. So what I did was place the glove in Bogey's cage a few, you know, for a few days and put pistachios near the glove and then put pistachios on the empty glove. And then I began, this is over days, I began wearing the glove and putting pistachios near it with my gloved hand resting in the cage near the entrance. And then I put pistachios on the glove while my hand was in the glove close to the entrance of the cage. And then I began to move my hand out of the cage holding the pistachios so that eventually he needed to step up onto the glove right next to his cage door my hand was pressed against the cage door in order to get one of the pistachios held in my fingers and then after a while adorable bogey turned out to be the cutest bird I ever saw in my life he would purr he would make the cutest chirping sounds now he's a bird with a bare belly and even though his behavior was charming and he's the one bird that I ever trusted to sit on my shoulder I don't let birds sit on my shoulder because I think it can be hazardous. It was hard to get Bogey adopted, just probably because of that bare belly. I don't know why people don't like birds with bare bellies who've pulled their feathers. They are just adorable to me and to many people. But at any rate, back to birds sitting on shoulders. Do not recommend it. Um, the owner of the facility would tell a story of someone who had a macaw and they were very deeply bonded to each other. The macaw would ride around on the guy's shoulder. And one day there was a very loud sudden sound. The macaw grabbed his owner's neck in order to keep his balance and happened to open up a wound and the owner of the bird bled out and died. Oof, that's upsetting. I mean, that's upsetting to the family of the person who lost their life unnecessarily this way, but imagine the trauma to the bird. So I find that story very upsetting and so Generally speaking, I don't let birds sit on my shoulder, but I did let Bogey do so because I had total trust in him after he was trained, and frankly, as a little bird, I didn't see him causing that big a wound to my neck. So, in this first video, you can see Bogey getting used to the glove inside his cage.
Hey, oh, a boy. I'm gonna touch my bogey. Oh, pretty boy. Pretty boy. Hi, Bogey. Well, hello, young man. How are you? No, thank you, Opie, buddy. I love you. I'm playing with Bogey. What are you doing, Opie, buddy? Hey, Bogey. Step up. Step up, Bogey Boogie. <laughs> Don't you want to step up and get him? Step up, cutie pie. Looky. Okay, you win this time. Yes, I know. You're too cute, Bogey. I just can't be mean to you. Hi, bogey. Oh, here comes the bogey. Here comes the bogey bird. Hi, sweetie. Hi, oh, baby. I know. It's so exciting. <laughs> it's bogey bird. I hear you coming. I see a head bob. It's Bogey Baby. <gasps> Here comes the bogey. Oh my goodness. Here comes Bogey Bird. Oh, what a happy bird. Hey, cutie. Hi, cutie pie. Who's a beautiful bogey? Yay, Bogey Bird! Yes, I know. You're too cute. Bogey's too cute. How you doing, Morocco?
love that buggy bird. I love that buggy bird. You know what? That's okay. I know. Look at you, king of the mountain. Oh, 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 we're going down the other side, huh? There's Bogey. So that's it. Bogey did learn to step up on my bare arm or even my hand. And he was ultimately adopted into his forever home, hopefully forever home, uh, by someone who loves him. And the nice thing is that using a glove, you can actually easily train the bird to step up to other people because you just have to have someone else wear the glove and use the pistachios. And it can be a fairly rapid transition to a bond between the bird and a new person.